Okay, this is just an afterthought, but I thought, hey, why don't I film this? At least for a before and after, maybe it can be useful to somebody. What we've got here is an Easton aluminium catamaran, built by a guy named Owen Easton in Tasmania, back in 91. And I wish I'd done this earlier so you could see how everything was kind of like this, covered in carpet, that had been ripped off with glue everywhere. And I found some pitting in the bottom. You can see those white dots. That's where it goes all the way through to the outside world. Now, I looked around on the internet and I couldn't really find anything that was specifically about what I wanted. Lots of good information, but not sort of targeted at what I was trying to accomplish. So I'm just gonna try and film this and you can see what I did. I'm gonna try and follow some best practices that some good welders and shipbuilders have told me about. Probably won't do it all 100% great, but we're gonna try. What we're looking at here is some grouped pitting or wasting they call it. What you see here is some isolated pits that are very deep. These ones have already sort of reamed out. There's two that go to the world, but they look like little nubs of corrosion. They can look, before you dig them out, they can look like that, which looks pretty benign. That's like a couple of mil across. But you start digging at them and you find out that they're actually really deep and really gnarly. So we got this pitting down here, but what we also have is there used to be a floor in here and some floor members, and they were welded on right here. And I've cut them off now. Probably can't see. Well, you can kind of see where it used to be. There were four of them, or four sides, two of them, four sides. And there's cracking around them. It's pretty probably hard to see, but you can see in the top of that little pad, there's a slight bit of a crack there happening. That's because it didn't have a doubler plate, so the, the force isn't all just point loaded right on the top of the piece of metal that's holding it together. Now if we go over here, this is the corner of the integrated fuel tank in the boat, and you can really see the cracks radiating from there. So what I'm going to try and accomplish on this go around is I'm going to grind that out, I'm going to cut out the crack, put a little hole in the end so they don't keep going, cut them out in the V, so there's a place for the weld to go weld them up, put a doubler plate over top, and it should be strong enough. Now as an aside, on this side, you'll see this plate that I've put on. I put that on a year ago, and I used 3M5200. I did one on each side. The one I just showed you was incredibly difficult to get off. I anticipate this one being even more difficult to get off. And it just speaks to how good that 5200 does bond. You can look that up yourself, but it's got really good bonding um, adhesion. And I think you could probably not fix this with a weld the proper way. You could just leave that there for a long, long time and not have a problem. But obviously I don't want to take any chances, so I'm just going to do it. But um, if you find yourself in a situation and you're thinking about it, you think, oh, can I just glue a patch on with 5200? If you follow their bonding instructions perfectly, then yeah, you totally can. It seems to be really strong stuff. All right, so welding. Gonna need a welder. Okay, there's lots of information on YouTube about welding, and if you got to my channel, you probably have looked at a lot of that stuff, so I won't, you know, go over it too much. But here's a few things that I've found that kind of work, things don't work, and things that, you know, you can afford. So, first off, is my welder. It's a G Weld MIG 198, apparently. Might have been 350 bucks, something like that. Got it in Malaysia, just kind of what was available. And it seems to be doing the trick. Comes with a stock gun. This guy. Two meters long, maybe. Zero fitting. And um, it just persisted with it. Again, YouTube's got lots of information on this. It's just too hard for a push gun to figure out soft aluminium. Everyone says it's like pushing a rope uphill, and that's totally right on put a Teflon liner, this guy in it, that helped a little bit, and if you keep it absolutely straight and everything is in a perfect, perfect situation, you can kind of get a few inches of weld before it bird's nests up and causes a bunch of grief and you have to rip out two meters of wire and F around, so. eBay, very tempting, this guy, spool gun. Not a Miller spool gun, looks like one, but it is definitely not. 
This might have been 200 bucks. I think I got it for a hundred and something, maybe even. Um, cheapest one I could find. It's got a Euro fitting, so much like this one. Goes straight on. Couple of hitches, though. First off, it's crap. It's just crap. I've completely burnt it out um, doing the first job I did with it. Burnt this hose. It's still all kind of ratty. I had to put a cover on it. Trigger fell apart. I had to put a new trigger on it. Um, the nozzle's pretty crappy. I've been sort of playing around with that. I'm going to get get one made up on a lathe maybe out of stainless or something this one's aluminium it's just it's just crap but the key to this little guy is it's got these gnarled teeth that pull the wire out and it only has to push it a very very small distance but mostly it's pulling onto this little spool um, you got to wind the spools by hand where I am because I can't find these spools um, which is kind of a pain but it's also kind of good because it does run out fast and that's probably right in the duty cycle of the gun and the welder so you take some time and let everything cool down while you mess around rewinding it. So it's a pain, but it's probably to the good in the end. Now, the problem with this guy is it runs on 24 volts. And even though the welder runs on 24 volts, the motor itself runs at only 12 volts. So what I've had to do is gear up a little relay and a little power supply for charging a laptop. And it's got a few different settings, 24, 22, 20, 19. And I can adjust my wire speed like that with different voltage. And then instead of pressing the trigger, actuating the built-in motor, it tells this relay to close. That sends the power from the power supply to the gun. So it's just a little mod you gotta make. Um, it seems to be working, it's just a pain. There's lots of ways, lots of processes up out there. You can sort of figure out what you can afford. There's definitely better ways to do this and they definitely cost a lot more. Um, and if you've got access to that, then that's really great. But if you don't, a couple hundred bucks for a spool gun, a little bit more than that for a welder, and you're sort of off to the races. Got everything cleaned up, prepped and ready. Next step is to cut out the plates I'm gonna replace. What we've got here is about 100 mil by 300 mil of plates on either side of the keel that I'm gonna cut out. You can see the white holes kind of shining through. What we're gonna do is cut out a radiused corner. It's a, I think it's a 50 mil radius, I'm not exactly sure. It's the size of the biggest hole saw that I have, which is this guy right here. So first I'll do a plunge cut with the hole saw there. Another cut here, there, there to leave me with a big old hole there. And then I'm gonna take a jigsaw with a Ali bimetal blade, kind of a good quality one to make life easier, and I'm gonna wax it up with surfboard wax so it slips, and I'm gonna cut out down here, probably from the inside, and then I'm gonna go to the outside and cut down there and down here. In my hand is the correct tool for the job. I call it a meat ax. This is like a circular saw blade that goes on a high RPM grinder, like an angle grinder. I almost killed myself with this about a year ago and I will never touch it again. But that said, it's the perfect thing because you don't want to contaminate the weld site. So you, with this guy, carbite tips like a circular saw and you just take it out. You can do the corners if you're careful. That's how I almost hurt myself was doing a corner. It bound, it went flying, and it's just the grace of God that I didn't get it in the crotch and die. Um, it went through my toe, um, which wasn't pleasant. It was like a slasher film on the boat. But anyway, my lesson has been learned. I will never touch this thing again. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, this is kind of the right way. This is what the professionals do all day, every day. And probably not that many of them kill themselves, but I will never touch this again. So my compromise is to use a jigsaw to cut out these ones and the whole saw to cut out that. So metal on metal, clean it up nicely and should be good. What you don't want to do is start using grinding wheels that have the you know, the, the black ones that have, um, I don't know, some sort of aggregate in it because it's going to contaminate the weld site and you want to avoid that wherever possible. So that's the first big repair we're going to do. Cut that out, make a template out of cardboard, transfer it over to a piece of 4 mil alley. Once I've got my pieces out, luckily there's not a lot of shape in this. It's pretty well dead flat. In fact, I would even say it is dead flat because it's a boat and it kind of goes up like this. If we were coming up this wall to here, we'd have to get that shape in, otherwise we'd have a hard bend, um, which is not hard to do, but easiest with a brake press. Um, I've done before is in between a couple of pieces of wood, drive over it with like a car or something to give it a little bit of, a little bit of bend, uh, but super you know finicky and, and not, not really precise kind of stuff. But I'm lucky I'm gonna use just a flat piece. I might sort of give it a little rat-a-tat with a hammer or 
tack it up here and then jack it into place there to give it a little bit of bend, but I'm not going to concern myself, even if it's flat um, there. I mean, if there's some bend I'm not getting, but in, I put in a flat, I'm not sort of worried about that. So once I've got my piece in, put a couple of ears on the outside, sort of like that, only on the outside, stick the plate in, so they're holding it, um, and then I'll tack it around the corner, weld from the outside, which is overhead, which is a little bit trickier, come inside, seal weld all on the inside, um, I'll pressure test it with some soap and power washer and stuff like that, um, and we'll make sure that it's watertight, and you know, all things being equal, should be pretty easy. The next thing you want to do is practice. Try and set up a simulation, which is as much like the job you're doing as possible, and keep practicing your welding until you get the result that you want. If it takes a long time or a short time, just keep going until you get an acceptable result. The overhead section is going to be the trickiest. You need to keep things hot and move fast. Be accurate with your weld. The goal is to have a continuous weld with no porosity, with good overlap and penetration. As you can see, this weld is pretty globby. It didn't go exactly to plan. Once I ground it down, I found some pinholes, which I went back and corrected. It's not an ideal result, but it's good enough, and it'll be strong and will hold for a long time. The welding part of this is something you can learn from lots of other videos on YouTube. There's some great information out there. Some things specific to working on boats. Because you're outside, wind is going to be a problem. You need to keep argon on the weld site. So gun position and all the things you'll learn on YouTube related to welding come into this, but also the wind blowing your argon away. Have a good screen to block the wind and just realize the effects of argon on the weld site and what happens if you don't have it and use that to troubleshoot your welding. I had hoped to do a lot more filming during the welding process, but just as things went, I was more focused on getting the job done to get my boat back in the water and didn't get as much footage as I wanted. So here's the finished result. I replated down here, fixed some cracks around the show, added a doubler plate on the side where the fuel tank was. It's definitely a work in progress. I've got more to do up forward here. There's a section of pitting. It wasn't really that bad, and so I decided just to fill it up with weld for now. Later I'll go around and I'll replate that. So here you can see the plates that I cut out. I had a little bit of contamination along the keel area, and I had to do a few passes. Not ideal. You want to try and limit the heat exposure, but I think it'll be fine. As you can see, the welds are by no means great. I'm not a professional welder. I have not put enough time on the machine to be truly proficient at this, but this weld will hold, and it's going to do the job it needs to do, which is keeping water out of my boat and keeping my boat strong, and it is certainly up to that task. Professional welders and hot dog guys out there are going to say, hey, you know, you did this wrong and that wrong and all the other thing. And they're totally right. You know, this is not a perfect job, but it is absolutely adequate and equal to the task it needs to do. I've already got my floor back down, so you can't really see all of this weld site, but this is one of the corners of the integrated fuel tank that had cracked. So just like the other cracks on the floor holders, I um, drilled out the ends of the cracks, filled it with weld, V'd it out, weld inside out, and then on this one I added the doubler plate. This was one of the first welds on the inside that I did, so this is a bit of a learning curve going on, and you can kind of see that as the weld progresses. So here you can see one of the cracks that I repaired. On the outside I ground it smooth, on the inside I just left it. A little bit out of laziness, and a little bit so that I could keep track of the weld site, maybe a bit extra structure, a bit more material there. You see there's a number there and a little check mark. It's good to keep track of the repairs that you've done and the check mark represents a successful leak test. So what I did there, my wife on the outside with a bottle of soapy water and some compressed air, just put the soapy water on the weld site and then blow against it with the compressed air. Me on the inside looking for bubbles coming. Once I was satisfied there was no leaks, I got a check mark. 
had a couple sites where there was a pinhole. So I ground it off, drilled it out, and just did it again. So this section here should really be replated. You can see the different weld sites. I am lucky I can haul out for free whenever I want. So down the track, I'll just replate these little sections. But I just wanted to get back in the water and I was in a bit of a rush. So what I did is I drilled out the really bad pits, only two or three of them. The others I just ground out with the die grinder and the burr. And then I just pad welded on the uh, inside. The ones I drilled out, I, I put it a little extra weld on the outside and ground it smooth. You know, it'll work and it'll probably be fine, but it's not best practice. I'll cut this out eventually, but for now, I have every confidence that it will hold and do the job it needs to do. This is definitely a work in progress, but she's strong and she's safe now. When I first opened up the doors to this section and I saw what was going on, there was like epoxy patches and spray box liner gooey stuff everywhere and it just it looked like a heinous mess and once it got all cleaned up went through the process a bit of stress along the way but in the end it all sort of worked out it's not something you need to freak out about but it does need to be addressed in some cases so just get in there and do your best maybe this video has been helpful and maybe it'll help you do the repair yourself or maybe it's just giving you some information so wherever you are if the expertise aren't quite there but you can find some guy who knows how to weld and he's got the right equipment you can guide the process a little bit and be a bit informed on what needs to happen all the best don't be scared to try just get in there spray some weld around stop the leaks and go sailing